Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of charting a patient's mouth is to accurately represent the teeth and surrounding structures on paper. A dental chart not only aids the dentist in his treatment planning, but also aids the hygienist in guiding her techniques during the prophylaxis appointment and in correlating dental hygiene care with dental care. The chart also serves as a permanent record of the patient's oral conditions, which may be referred to at a later date. To aid in a quick evaluation of the areas charted, a color-coded system is used. Green indicates gold restorations. Blue indicates non-metallic restorations. Red is used to designate dental caries, tissue re registration, and fractures. And gray or black is used to indicate amalgam restorations. In addition to the color coding, a series of symbols are used to indicate other findings in the oral cavity. To indicate a missing tooth, a gray or black penciled X is placed over all surfaces of the tooth on the chart. Open contact areas are designated by gray or black parallel lines placed between the two teeth. The tissue level, either from hypoplasia or from tissue recession, is indicated by drawing the exact level of the tissue in red. An arrow pointing in the direction that the tooth is going would be used to indicate an extruded tooth. Erupting teeth are indicated by placing the letter E in the box corresponding to the number of the tooth in red and then still using red draw the exact diagram of the tissue placement on the tooth. Drifted teeth are indicated by drawing an arrow in the direction of the drift. And rotated teeth are designated by drawing an arrow in the direction that the tooth is rotated. The restoration which you will be charting most frequently is the amalgam restoration or the silver filling. The first type of amalgam restoration is the class one restoration. Class one restorations may appear as two single restorations in the occlusal pit a mesial occlusal restoration and a distal occlusal restoration. Or you may find the entire occlusal surface as one large restoration. In class one restoration, the interproximal surfaces are not involved. Class one restorations may also be found on the buccal or lingual pits of the posterior teeth or in the cingulum of an anterior tooth. The second type of amalgam restoration is the class two. The occlusal and interproximal surfaces are involved in this restoration. Notice that when this restoration is diagrammed, the restoration extends all the way over past the marginal ridge on the occlusal view of the diagram, but is not shown on the buccal or lingual surface unless we have a situation in which the restoration wraps around the tooth surface, as you see here. We would then indicate that restoration by drawing the view where we see the, the amalgam. The second type of class two restoration is the MOD, mesio-occlusal distal restoration, where both interproximal surfaces and the occlusal surface are involved. Again, the restoration is indicated only from the occlusal view unless the restoration wraps around the buccal or lingual surface, and this one does not. Next type of amalgam restoration which you will be charting is the class five restoration. This restoration appears at the cervical third of the tooth on the buccal or lingual surface. The second most frequently charted restoration is the non-metallic restoration. Non-metallic restorations include porcelain and plastic restorations, silicate and resin 
restorations, the new modern day composite restorations, as well as temporary fillings. This is a class three non-metallic restoration appearing on the interproximal surface of an anterior tooth. The, this restoration, like your amalgam restoration, will not be diagrammed unless it is visible. We would diagram this restoration only from the buccal surface, the facial surface, not from the lingual. We could have a class five non-metallic or composite restoration diagrammed very similar to the amalgam class five, with the exception that our composite restorations are being diagrammed in blue. And the last type of non-metallic restoration which we would see is the temporary restoration, restoration placed only until a more permanent restoration can be inserted. Remember that your non-metallic restorations are charted in blue. The amalgam restorations were charted in gray or black. The third type of restoration you will see is the gold restoration. Gold is used for gold foil restorations, gold inlays, gold crowns, and protective cusp inlays. The first, the gold foil restoration, is used for small pits and will usually have a rough or dull hammered appearance as compared to the gold inlay, which has a very smooth, shiny appearance. This is a class one gold inlay involving only the occlusal surface. It is charted identically to the amalgam restoration, except that gold restorations are charted in green. The second common type of gold restoration you will see is the class five, or the cervical third, of the tooth restored in gold. The next type of gold restoration, which you will see most frequently, is the class two inlay. Class two inlays can be your simple inlay, the MO or DO, or the complex class two, the MOD restoration. These are diagrammed exactly as you would a class two amalgam restoration, showing the restoration only from the occlusal view, unless the gold actually wraps around the tooth on the buckle or lingual surface. In addition to the simple types of class two restorations, we can have what is called a protective cusp inlay. This is an MOD protective cusp inlay. The inlay extends over the buccal surface of the tooth, protecting these cusps. It could, it could also extend to the, to the lingual and protect the lingual cusp. This would be an MOD protective cusp inlay with the buccal protected. When these are diagrammed, the green um, diagramming must extend over the surface that, it, um, is, that the gold is covering. In addition to the inlay, we can have various forms of crowns. The first would probably be the three-quarter crown, in which the facial surface of the tooth or any surface of the tooth that does not necessarily have to be restored is left in its natural form. On this one, the buccal surface has been left in its natural form. The interproximal surfaces and the lingual surface have been covered with gold. This would be referred to as a three-quarter gold crown. In addition to the three-quarter gold crown, we could have what is known as a full gold crown. The full gold crown provides maximum protection or coverage for the tooth. The tooth is cut down, and a new crown is designed from gold. It is placed on the tooth and permanently cemented in place so that all surfaces of the tooth, are, crown of the tooth, are covered with gold. Crowns and inlays in various combinations can be used to create what is known as a fixed or permanent bridge. A fixed or permanent bridge is a non-removable replacement for a missing tooth. In making a fixed or permanent bridge, the teeth are cut down or prepared and the crowns for the areas to be restored are made and then soldered together. They are then permanently cemented into the um, area where the tooth is missing. The, the bridge may be made of all gold or be, may be made of a combination of various materials. 
Regardless of what is used to make the bridge, you should be careful when charting it to diagram it exactly as you see it in the mouth, whether it's all gold crowns or gold inlays or combinations. To indicate that this series of gold is a fixed bridge, we would note the missing tooth by using black or gray pencil to place an X over the roots of the teeth. Um, this differs from when we indicated a full missing tooth in that we use only the roots and not all surfaces of the tooth. In addition to using gold to restore teeth, we can use synthetic or resin materials. Particularly in the anterior area of the mouth where we would not want gold to show for aesthetic purposes. This is what is called a jacket. A crown in an anterior portion of the mouth is referred to as a jacket. Jackets can be made of all resin materials, plastic, porcelain materials, or they may have gold fused to them. What you're looking at here is a full non-metallic jacket covering all surfaces of this anterior tooth. Jackets are diagrammed on the chart by using parallel blue lines, not a solid blue diagram as when we did just non-metallic restorations. In addition to being all a non, made of all non-metallic material, the jacket may be made of a combination of non-metallic material and gold for additional strength. In addition to giving it strength, the non-metallic material on the facing of, of this jacket provides an, an aesthetic value for the patient so that when they smile, the gold material is not seen. This would be indicated by using a combination of the gold for the, um, the green, I'm sorry, for the gold material used and the blue lines for the non-metallic material. In addition, you will sometimes see a small gold band encircling the non-metallic non material. This would indicate to you that the crown or the jacket is a porcelain or non-metallic material fused to gold. Be sure to indicate this gold band when diagramming the tooth. There are several additional oral findings which you will need to chart. The first is decalcification. Decalcification is charted by placing a circle with red in the appropriate place on the tooth, drawing a line and writing the words decal. A partial denture is charted by placing an X over the root of the missing tooth, drawing a line to indicate the placement of the clasps on the adjacent teeth, and then indicating the replacement teeth appropriately, either with blue to indicate non-metallic as we have here. If this partial denture was composed of gold or any other materials, you would have to indicate it by the appropriate colors. A fractured tooth is indicated by using a jagged red line in the appropriate area of the fracture. If we have a fracture over a restoration, we draw the restoration just as we see it in the black color and then use the red to draw a jagged line through the restoration right in the area of the fracture. Finally, we'll want to chart caries. When we have an area of decay around a restoration, we first draw the restoration and then encircle the restoration with red. This will be referred to either as recurrent decay or you may hear the term a defective restoration. Caries in a tooth that has not been previously restored is indicated by a solid red area in the area of the decay. And the last thing that you'll want to know how to chart is a full denture. A full denture is indicated by drawing a line through all views of the teeth, buccal, lingual, and occlusal, and writing the word denture in the space between the occlusal views. Finally, I'd like to show you how a chart that has been completed on a patient should look. You will have a variety of findings using your various colors to indicate porcelains, non-metallic restorations, golds, and all the symbols necessary to indicate all the findings in a patient's mouth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. 
please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.